covered that the works out. Item number eight is now to add sales tax increase of one cent for Palm Beach Simple Board of Education to request on November ballot. Everybody knows why. We gotta have some help. Anybody got any questions? I hope that um, everybody here is during our discussions and they heard our discussions teaching about how important these taxes are. Uh, of course, I hit on the sales tax um, the other day, although it's just, but it seems to be a small portion that will end up any help is better than nothing. And we want to try to offset the burden that's probably on as much as possible, although we know that's going to be never going to do. But, um, and education is power here. So make sure you get out in the community and educate your citizens and voters that are not here about what the purpose of this is. It's very important. So keep that in mind. I have a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion to make and second. All the way. Motion by the Mr. Attorney, second by Mr. Elrod to, re to request that the County County Commission to formally request the County County Commission to place an increase all the local option sales tax from 1.75% to 2.75% on the November 2020 ballot. Mr. Aye. Mr. Elrod. Aye. Mr. Sanders. Aye. Mr. Tony. Aye. Chairman Fenton. Aye. Chairman, I ask no names. All right. Next item is a little tax increase. Anybody want to discuss that or we just want to ask? So we're proposing to take it to a total of 75. Fifty-two dollars for our portion of it. We're going to pay off our debt. We already have faster, and maybe possibly move forward after payment. And um, the house, it's on the single unit. Exactly. Did they? Um, did they go to sunset before y'all? They did. Okay. But we have time to build on that. I guess what I'm going to answer is because that can obviously it's going to increase a little bit, but is this 40 and then another 75, which end up to 100? Or no, it's just the fact that it's 75. I don't think we can do that. Okay, okay. That's, that's, right, right now, Mr. Sanders, it is $50.25. Right. The most way I understand it is to increase that to $75. Now, that's what it is. I thought that was a Start I can I can tell you looking at the chart and most all of y'all have the Tennessee County Tax Statistics. I mean, the audience can get this after the CPAS uh, County Technical Assistance Service Community. It's the same thing I'm reading out of right now. In table six, there are many, many counties uh, that are that are even above 75. There's one county, Lake County, in the upper western part of the state with the hundred dollars. That's the highest in Tennessee. Is, uh, is Lake County. Uh, others, others are incomparable to the 75, several or 70, several, several or 75, and $65. Got a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve. Second. 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 To place an increase in the county motor vehicle tax rate from $50 uh, to $0.25 to $75 on the November 2020 ballot. Mr. Daniel. Aye. Uh, Mr. Elrod. Aye. Uh, Mr. Sanders. Aye. Uh, Mr. Tony. Aye. Uh, Chairman Bain. Aye. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Ives, no names. All right. I can just say the case. I don't know. 
basically robbing Peter to pay Paul here. So we've got two options that can be discussed. And it's rough. The way I see it, this last textbook adoption that we have here is going to be the last that we get for a long time, unless we have an increase. Capital outlay is going to be taken in either option a lot lower than normal, which means that if something happens in one of these schools that's major, some of the kids may be hot and they may be cold. We can't pay. All right, guys, let's discuss option four and five. Yes. Mr. Chairman, it's boring. Uh, if you look at option four, basically, Mr. Sanders, uh, is uh, option, and option four is to do what he suggested last evening, or last, last weekend, just like last evening. But uh, what this one does, we had already made some cuts, Mr. Nichols had already made some major cuts at the high school already. These cuts are in this budget. We no longer have a chemistry teacher at the high school. The high school has lost four employees to help with the budget. That's rough. That's rough. Go ahead, Mr. Curtis. That would, that would also decrease the three uh, instructional coaches, one, one RTI and two assistant instructional coaches, one assistant principal. The COVID ID uh, 19 Cares Act will receive $75,000 out of what we just passed a few moments ago. Uh, there's no elevated performance in this budget due to no uh, level of effectiveness. Uh, nursery has moved over from, uh, from another fund, uh, Ms. Patterson's state funding, over to, to GP. This transportation that also has one contract bus driver decreased from that. There are no growth positions in this budget, as suggested by Mr. Sanders. This is a reduction of capital outlay to $150,000. That is a reduction of, from $300,000 to $150,000. And again, no textbooks in the FY21 budget. And you can look at the various line items uh, in the in option four and go down through there and see those and see what's there. Uh, again, we did have some, some help from COVID-19 because the utilities were down, which was a good thing for us, a positive outcome of a very negative situation. For the budget, not for the budget, not for the kids. The kids need to be here. We need to, we need to help them all again. But uh, for the budget, it was, we received some help. So you, you can look at that, I've cut, we've cut, I've gone back down to the line items and looked at each line item, the expenditure line item. And then again, certainly we were moving more month funding into this budget from what we had, but what, you, what will happen, we will continue to go into reserves and uh, I'm sure we will continue having to send monthly reports to the conference for our shows. Because of the cash flow situation here. It's like at home when you, uh, folks are in the audience, when you have a budget at home, you have to, you have to cut sometimes. And this is what's going on here. Now, this, so, this budget will keep the librarians. This budget will keep the librarians. And art, the art teacher, this will fund three art teachers. That's what it will fund. That, will, that means that those three would uh, that have to travel. Right now we have four art teachers, and I get some nods there from art teachers. But you had four art teachers that were, were some were traveling. Now you're going to reduce the three because we had someone to retire. So this funds three art teachers. It also funds all the librarians, including your part-time librarians or your those non-certified folks that are helping in the smaller schools. That funds that. So um, basically, the only differences in option four and option five is, is, is that um, the capital outlay. That was in Mr. Daniels' uh, 
option five, and he kept, we kept, he kept it at $300,000. That's basically the only differences. And if you look at the bottom lines here, you know, we've not gone through this, and Douglas and I've gone through this. If you miss, this, is, this budget has been examined, I would dare say, closer than any budget in the last many years. Would you say that, Douglas? We did this one about an hour. And so we did, we did this one. We moved along and made sure this was the, the sponsors what they what they desire in, in this budget. But these 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 line items have been scrutinized again and again and again to look for any savings whatsoever. I can quote many of these lines in my sleep. Uh, that's how close we looked at these. So you can look at the bottom line there on page seven and eight. And you can see there in this budget, that one in the black. One in the black for the first time in about five years. One in the black. Not only by 50 of these, 9,805 to be precise. So this is, you know, next year, we probably will not have COVID-19 limits. So this is basically, you're, you're standing by, basically is what this budget does. You stand by until the next year. And I know that you mean it better. But the board is very interested in dialogue with the commission and the understanding that next year, it's gonna, we're gonna be right back here again. And or worse, it's going to be worse. So this is a stopgap measure, is what it is. And uh, you know, like I said uh, on Tuesday evening, what has occurred is that we got a, we got a double whammy. We can get hard because of us going into reserves and using non-recurring funds, recurring funds, last several years, and then we got COVID nineteen. And as soon as this is, as soon as this budget is adopted and, and we make uh, personnel decisions there, then we'll turn right around and then next week, I will be talking to you, so I should hope probably to the director's comments. We are formulating a task force to look at the reopening of Kent County schools, hopefully on August, uh, starting with in-service on August the 5th, and hopefully, uh, hopefully opening up that next week. And that's what we're looking for. We've got a 40-page document, by the way, we have to go through. And that's going to be the task force will have a, a literal tough task of you know getting everything perfect ready for that. But we don't know what that's going to take in the budget. Many school systems are having the same difficulties we are throughout the state. Uh, and I talked to State Representative uh, Boyd and also to say Senator Cody. Other systems are saying telling tell them the same things we are in those areas of the upper Cumberland may represent. This is tough, and more tough days are coming for us. And then hopefully by that point, we can sit down with the commission and develop a five-year plan where we can say to them, we've got, we've got to maintain these particular schools until a solid plan is developed. And the development of that plan is essential for the next four years of budgets to go through. So those are my comments, Mr. Chairman, in regard in regard to this budget. Uh, like I said, many many hours have been spent has been spent on all the options. Looking at this, uh, lots of you know, this is a. I think we call it skin by the skin of our teeth kind of budget. Yeah, that's absolutely no way to bring anyone. I want to tell everybody that's out there: if you have anything you want the Board of Education to fund, get it. We can do it. But at the same time, we have done most everything. I'm glad you said that, Mr. Friend. And I think all our principals are here. Um, like he said, you're not giving anything. Um, but we're working on the roofs, thanks to the county commission. Um, the high school's got a new gym floor. Um, you know, there's there should be need of an HVAC, and that's what I was counting for. So uh, you know, the high school's done a great job with the PTO. Hopefully that will continue. Uh, so, you know, 
And all of her school support organizations are phenomenal. Every single one of them, every principal <coughs> to stand up and say, they have funded things that probably we should have funded in the past. I speak as one principal, I say that. Yeah, every person you see here, every, but you can't drive through Woodbury without someone standing up with a can in their hand begging for money. I think it's a shame. We need to make sure we remember what's being said today in our group of preaching. We need to take this home with us to all the members of the community. And we probably, you know, just we were talking about about the sales tax, the bill tax, and the cost of property tax. I mean, uh, I've always said that when you talk about tax increases, it's not electable, electable thing to say, I quite frankly care less about the election for your children. I don't care less. I don't care. And so, uh, whether you like it or not, and so that's what we need. So the ticket to county commission, let them know how you did it. Um, let them know what you expect from us. Uh, talk to us about it too. Let us help us be your voice. Uh, but you have to remember this thing. Hey, you've got to educate the people that are not here on these taxes. Because we've got to have revenue to operate. We've got to have it. It's like I said on Tuesday, we have to have it. And we're squeaking right now. And I'm, I'm tickled that we've come up with a plan to chuck us by for now. I'm glad. And I appreciate it. Made for helping us with that, those logistics. But uh, everybody needs to keep that in mind because uh, we don't want to be back to having this conversation again and it'd be worse than what we are right now. That's going to happen if, if we don't make some progress. If we receive no extra funding, it's going to happen. Uh, we happen. will be right back in the same spot and we may be looking at more um, than what we did this week. I'm telling you, it's the truth. It's rough, it's tight. All right, guys. What's going to be think it's best to go with? They're, they're basically both the same, except you pay the $150,000 difference. Correct. And that's in the capital outlay. Uh, and that comes from capital We better yeah. leave it in the capital outlay, or what was that you said we were flexible to read? You can amend your budget any time during the year. You can move it. You can take down the capital where you want to move it. You want whatever. That's not a good decision. You want to move it to capital outlay some other Question on the, uh, the revenue. Um, the payments in lieu of taxes, both of the utilities. Um, in 1819, we were budgeting for $119,000, and then in 1920, $119,000. We don't have anything for this year. What happened there? It's coming in through the property tax now rather than through that. And, and also, Mr. Sanders, uh, in line 46851, further down, you'll see that state revenue share in there, too. That is the difference in when we know that the county commission is the $2.9 million to 2.909. million. That figure has been down there, the other 350000 that we estimated. This year it was three ninety eight. We don't know what that state revenue sharing will be this year, but we're estimating at three fifty. Hopefully it's more than that. But that's basically why you're seeing the difference in, in those lines. It's down there from state education, other state revenues. That's a state revenue sharing PDA is where that's at now. And that's where the difference I learned the same thing. When you see the BEP 2.909, you don't see 2.5592, 2.559, 550. And the difference in the two is that 350,000 right there. I hope I've explained that well, though. This is one of those nine, all right? Well, right now, what do we say, Doug? This is the capital outlay that we have spent so far this year. What was that? 138. Remember, we had the roofs in this, and then these line items you get from the tail. And what we decided, what we did then is to go back and go check that. So about 138. 
you look that back at the previous years too with capital outlay, you, you can see there what we've done in the past. Uh, back in 1718, uh, remember we had that uh, at uh, the regular capital outlay, you can see there 249, 477, and then 269. Uh, 040 in 1819 is what, what we had there. So if you look at that, that capital outlay there, we spent actually 237, 177. The other part of that because we got the roof. When we all did the roof situation for y'all. We did that, we had to go ahead and pay greater. And then later he reduced that. Once we got that, got the, the, the other money, then he reduced it by that amount. So we got that back. So we, we do have the option. More in capital outlay, the move capital outlay money that we need. That is correct. And anything else on the budget? Anything else? But that would require a budget amendment, is what it would require. That would go to the county commission. Okay, so if we, your day, or fiscal year today, you spent 138000 on capital outlay. Whatever we have left in that, we start July 1. Well, we have left in that we won't find balance if we can get a big balance. Get a contribute to your total whether you're going in to fund balance or not going to fund balance. That's right. Which still helps with the state test. Well, we don't really know if the service after the commission approves this budget. Well, we know if the state passes it after the commission approves it, then we turn it in. Won't really know until we get the year closed, which will happen probably the end of July. Upload it to the state, this budget entered, and it uploaded to the state. Then come it up sometime in August. Yes, I, I do want to clarify. I know most everybody was here the other night. Um, but what I have heard from the people that reached out to me is we want to keep our schools, we want to keep art, we want to keep library. And some teachers that are used to having maximum class sizes have no problem with that. I did not hear from anyone about class sizes being maximized. So I say that to say this, there are no growth positions in this budget. So teachers, principals, there's no growth positions in here. So maximum class sizes is something you're gonna have to look at. And you know, if you taught it, I'm gonna pick on my school, if you taught at Westside for eight years, and you love Westside, they're a great one to love, but Mr. Curtis needs you at, you know, Woodbury Grammar. You may have to Woodbury Grammar, but you're getting a job with Kent County Schools. That's what I have heard. I know it's not ideal, but, uh, and, and, and that's tough. I mean, we have always had growth positions in there, and Mr. Curtis and Douglas, they beat me up, but I, I just want to make sure that message is clear. The maximum class sizes are going to have to happen. Um, because, I mean, there's nothing. There, there's 60,000, and that might get you the teacher, might not, but Rutherford County's open another school, and you know, our other systems around us pay more. So, this is taking care of our own, our own schools, our own teachers. Um, so, I just want to make that message loud and clear. And the second thing, and I wish I had some numbers I could pass out to everybody, but when the sales tax failed the last time, we as county county citizens paid for the building of Siegel uh, Middle School. We paid for that. Let's pay for a school in County County, or at least an upgrade. If we want to keep seven, I mean, that's got to be decided. But let's pay, spend that right here. Um, COVID-19 kind of made us all shock, but let's pay to spend that right here. You pay it in Murfreesboro, in Smithville, in Manchester, in McMinnville. Why not spend it here? I will never understand that. And I've said that to every single person 
that it said something. Because here's the other thing, guys. There's no money in this budget for bonuses. And yes, you all deserve a bonus meeting the standards. But there's no money in here for that. And I want you to get that. And I, I don't like that. But I had to go with what I was hearing from the district. So hopefully the commission will um, hear our recommendations and our requests. But if you start now shopping locally, we get somewhere around 80, it's, it's at least 50 percent or more of the sales tax so guys just think what that would do if you shop local the only thing you can't get here and the french store may already have it is shoes and brand new clothes the only thing you can't get here correct me if i'm wrong right right you can't get not the brand new you know nike and under armor and all that but you can buy what you need in any county there's Thrift store. I mean, we don't have to go through all that, <laughs> but um, there are businesses that we can support here that will start helping this number so that if the decision is made to keep six schools in a high school, then you know we can get chemistry in high school. We can have a growth position and whatever else might want to be offered. So. That's my soapbox. We have to remember, us as the board, we do not have the power to appropriate more money for us. That is out of our hands. That is in the commission's hands. And there are several things here. Like I said, the tax, the tax is too long reference. You have to talk to the county commission. We can't do that. So there's some things that were our, our hands are tied. We can make those and spend the money, but we can't give ourselves more. The enthusiasm that Short Mountain showed the other night. You got to show it again. All right, guys, which one do you want to recommend? We'll make a motion. We'll go with number four with eight. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Call the roll. First made by Mr. Daniel, seconded by Mr. Turner to approve. The final recommendation regarding the FY21 general purpose school budget as option number four. Mr. Daniel. Aye. Mr. Elrod. Aye. Mr. Sanders. Aye. Mr. Turner. Aye. Chairman Payne. Aye. Mr. Chairman, five eyes, no names. Serious over to the commission post haste. The next budget committee meeting, uh, the next budget meeting, and state of uh, what we have done in regard to uh, the additions and looking at the 68 and a half as a substitute instead of the 75 that we see over there earlier. All right, item number nine. Director's comments. Mr. Turks, please. Okay, so I think I've got to let you know that I just want to No, 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 no. Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, we will be starting a task force like I said a few months ago. Our task force will so we'll be bringing supervisors and members of the community, people uh, from the health department, um, individuals uh, that are very knowledgeable in this body. I, I, I asked her to head back up in regard to still opening up because she. And it's coordinated with school health. She's been help, helping that. And you know, we are living in, and I'm tired of saying unprecedented. I'm tired of saying uncharted waters, but we are. And other, we're looking at what could happen in Tennessee. The latest statistics indicate that it is still, it is still lives affected. It's in the COVID 19 is still lives. So do the Tennessee Pledge. Uh, separate the mass of whatever we need to do. We don't know what that's going to look like yet at schools. We're still looking at evaluating the material. As soon as we know something, we will we will do that. As soon as the decision is made, we will go forward with that and, and make sure that COVID-19 is doing the best we can with what we have. And that's going to be a formidable task, uh, especially for schools, even our schools um, sanitized. That's going to be paramount uh, and, and 
looking at masks and whether masks or not, that's going to have to be looked at. One of the CDC guidelines is guidelines by the State Department of Health and the, the, the Tennessee, we got a 40 page guidance document. It doesn't tell us what to do, it just says, boards, here's your options to do. So I'll be bringing uh, information back to you at the uh, July meeting in regards to the reopening of schools. It is my hope. It is my sincere hope that we can get schools open uh, in August. So uh, I see a lot of nod, uh, heads nodding from parents who are ready to send them back to us. And guess what, parents? We're ready to see send them back to us. So I've said a lot, but we've got to do it under the appropriate safety. And that's part of our goal, besides being a mission of educating all of our students. That's our goal. And the whole thing. Our mission is to prepare all of our students for the future. The second part of that, that vision is doing it as it, doing it excellently, doing it excellence every day. And then our goal, main goal, to keep having safe and supportive learning environment. And that, what you just passed in our budget, that's what we're going to continue to do, is have a safe and supportive learning environment for your students. And that's our, that's our number one priority. I told somebody that today. And they said, you know, that's kind of refreshing. We talked to other directors, and that's not not part of the cases. That's an our deal. I want my kids safe. I want them here, and I want them. And so that's what we're, our job is going to do. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I yield back my what it was uh, the eight oh nines and seven thirteen. So there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, okay, thank